Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me on a Friday. We've made it through another week, and we're about to have Christmas in June. <laughs> I'll explain that in just a minute. Grab a good cup of coffee and join me over in Luke chapter 1, but I want to open up with a verse from Galatians chapter 4. First this morning, as we're looking at the life of Christ, yesterday we left uh, a wonderful picture that's been painted by the angel Gabriel as he goes to make an announcement to Elizabeth, who's been barren into her old age, but has been informed that she is going to get pregnant after all, and she's going to have a son, one who will be called John the Baptist. Now Gabriel's about to move on to make another announcement, and this is at some time later, not immediately. So let's see what the timing is all about. I think we find the answer in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, which from the Christian Standard Bible reads that when the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Now, that phrase perhaps is correct from the original language, but it doesn't have the ring to it that other versions do. And you know what I'm talking about from the King James and many other versions choose to use a different phrase. Now, some will say things like, but when the time was right, God sent his son, or when the appointed time arrived in the CJB, the, then God sent his son. But I think most of us are more familiar with not only the way the King James does it, but some other versions, uh, the ESV, the New American Standard, a lot of them retain this phrase, when the fullness of time had come, or when the fullness of time was come. And this feeling of the fullness of time seems to carry a little more uh, weight to it, in my mind, to try to say, now wait a minute, there's something about the timing of when this is going to happen. And in particular, it's matching up with something in the plan of God, the fullness of time. And the timing is especially something that we want to notice in not just the way that Jesus came at a certain time, but the timing that goes along with the birth of John the Baptist. So let's get over to Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. And as you're getting there, I just want you to think if you have at times felt like the hand of God has been upon you in the timing of certain events, don't just dismiss that seems like God's timing is quite often at work in our lives, maybe even more than we want to admit. So instead of dismissing God's timing and saying, no, no, that was just a coincidence. I, I kind of prefer Gibbs Rule 39. There are no coincidences. It seems like God is very active in the lives, especially of his own children. So let's see how that's working in the first chapter of Luke, beginning in verse 26. Remember, Elizabeth has already received the word of her pregnancy. Matter of fact, she is about six months along. And we pick up in verse 26 where it says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin. It was engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. <laughs> you know, when someone shows up, obviously an angel of the Lord, and says, God's with you, God's for you, you usually expect there's going to be an assignment to come after that. There's, uh, you know, anyone raised in the culture Mary was raised and was apparently a very good and godly young woman, most certainly a teenager at this point in her life, um, already recognizes from all the stories you've been told and all the scriptures you've been taught through the years that something's going on here. So what does he say after you found favor with God? Wondering what kind of greeting this would be, the angel had told her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found this favor with God, this grace, actually. Now listen, verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great when we call the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and his kingdom will have no end. Well, Mary asked the angel, how can this be, since I have not had sexual relations with a man? Listen, Mary's not ignorant. She knows how these things work. Um, I'm going to have a baby? Really? Explain this. Verse 35, the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called childless, for nothing will be impossible with God. Now, look at the timing here of something. I don't think it's an accident. The fact that the the angel Gabriel has an assurance at, after the announcement. And the assurance is something's going on in your whole family. We know who you are, and God recognizes your place, your faithfulness, your devotion to him. Now, check this out. Your relative, who's much older, wiser, and more experienced than you, is now sixth, in her sixth month of pregnancy with her own miracle child, not fathered by God, but fathered by Zechariah. But she's there for a reason. You will understand this. Some folks have wondered, why in the world do we see an announcement made by Gabriel to Mary, but not her own parents? How would her parents react to the news that she is pregnant? Are they really going to believe her story, that this is a God thing? Or will they immediately question it and be antagonistic instead of supportive? Who knows why God did not choose to announce this to Mary's parents, but there is something going on here that has to work together like the giant jigsaw puzzle. The fact that, number one, Mary is going to need the encouragement of a woman who's, as in all cultures, gone through the same thing that she's about to go through to answer all of her questions and help her along. Let's face it, there was no Google search for her to use in that day to find out what's next as far as information, as far as her pregnancy goes. You would always find that relative that's been there, done that. And so here we have, I believe, God setting up for Mary, especially for Mary, this timing of Elizabeth's birth of John the Baptist just ahead of Jesus. It is not by any way an accident, and you'll find out why in the subsequent verses. Now, the next thing that's quite interesting is here is Gabriel laying out some theology for Mary. In, in particular, that verse 37, nothing will be impossible with God. Remember, here is a miracle working God, and now he's working a miracle in your life. Matter of fact, the ultimate miracle, he's bringing forth the Messiah through guess who? Of all the women in the world, it's going to be through you. And Verse 38 is quite telling. Remember Zechariah's response to Gabriel's announcement? He was skeptical, and it cost him his voice for a period of time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, remember the announcements made about miracles in the Old Testament? Think about Abraham and Sarah and others. Uh, sometimes skepticism is an immediate response. Mary is quite different. There is not one word of contention, not, well, do you not realize what you're getting me into? Do you not realize that I'll be labeled? I might even be attacked. Seriously? No, there is not one word of complaint from Mary. Instead, verse 38 says, see, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Well, that's where we're going to leave her today after this wonderful announcement that Jesus is on his way. The one named Jesus, that's literally from a New Testament standpoint, the, the name Joshua means the Lord will save. Even the name that you're going to give this child describes what he's going to do for each and every one of us. And the Lord's still reaching out and he's still saving today. So God bless you for being a part of God's family. And if you're not, why wait? Why not get on your knees right where you are right now and confess Jesus as Lord and Savior? Call on him because the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will 
be saved matches up perfectly with the name. Well, God bless you. You have a great day in him. And I'll see you again next week on Monday as we wake up in the word. And not only tomorrow for a countdown to his coming, but we're going to have a little bonus video getting ready for some of you who are going to be following the Southern Baptist Convention next week. So God bless each and every one. I'll see you next time as we wake up in God's word.